Hi, thanks guys. My name is Jason Roberts. I'm from uh, Oak Cliff, Texas, which is in Dallas. It's always been considered kind of the bad part of town. Uh, I lived there, lived there with my wife about 10 years ago. This is a picture of me and my community, what kind of I'm known for. I'm called the bike guy or the alternative transportation guy. Uh, I, our city has not been very active about promoting things like bicycling and, and walking, so I just, I've learned to take it on myself. Um, so where did all this start? Uh, my wife and I um, went to Europe about 10 years ago. And uh, I'd go to these great plazas, like in Italy, and I'd see these amazing, beautiful fountains and these, uh, these you know, places where pe old people could linger with, with their grandchildren and, and these great markets that were buzzing with life and with energy. And, uh, and then I'd go to places like in the north and, and see, uh, in Scandinavia, you know, these beautiful old buildings with these uh, small little shops everywhere and these little streets and, and people riding their bicycles everywhere. And, uh, and, and then I came back to Dallas and I thought, well, well, where are we building? What's going to be our legacy? What's going to be our thing that lasts a thousand years like these things? When I got back home, I saw this stuff. And I remember thinking, wow, this is not, this is, I mean, where can I put my, uh, my cafe table? Like, where can I have, like, my... My, my bicycle ride with my grandchild someday. So this is like our aqueducts. You know, this is what we're passing on for a thousand years. This is what we're saying. This is our priority as our city. So my first step, I thought, well, you know what? I want to get involved. I'm going to start meeting people in my community. I'm going to go to those local organizations like the Chambers and the Lions Clubs and all those things. And when you walk into a room and you see a bunch of people that look like this, the thing, you're, 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 you, think, you think, you know, I don't belong here. These aren't my people. You know, this is not, you know, and, and, and. But the thing is, that's the worst thing you can do because these are actually the doers. These are guys that are showing up. These are guys that come out and want to make things better. They are looking for, for leaders and people to take on charges so they can stand behind. So don't walk away from these folks. You need these. So within my community, I thought, okay, what can I start on? I want to fix something. I want to help something. We had this old theater that was beautiful, but it was falling apart. It was the Texas Theater. Uh, it's over on Jefferson Boulevard, and it was boarded up. Uh, it, it's kind of well known because this is where Lee Harvey Oswald was captured uh, in '63. Um, so I thought, you know, why don't I take this theater and see if I can do something with it? I brought some friends together, and I said, you know, let's let's do a giant art show inside. And we created all these little easels, and again, it had been boarded up for 10 years or so. Nobody had come in, dusty, falling apart. Uh, the sign was falling apart. Uh, and we said, I got some friends that were artists. I'm, I'm in a band as well, so I've been in music and, and, and things like that. So I brought my friends together and said, let's bring out 100 of our friends, and we'll just paint these easels, and we'll sell them all the next day. So a few minutes before we're about to open the door to this, we're thinking, what, are we crazy? This is nuts. This is, this is a, in the bad part of town. It was winter at the time. Uh, and it's an old theater that people don't ever think to go to. This is going to be an abject failure. We put all this money on our credit cards. What were we thinking? But we opened the doors. We had 700 people show up. And at that point, people came out and said, we love this. This is great. We were waiting for someone to fix this space. And we're so glad you did this. So at that point, we learned, wow, if somebody just stands up and takes an initiative and starts just giving people an idea to change the perception of a place, it makes a huge difference. Now this place is owned by, uh, we have a group, groups in here that are showing regular films now, and it's become an anchor for this block. It's been very successful. So drunk with excitement and enthusiasm and thinking, wow, if I can do that, what else can I do? I went to my local library. And uh, I went to the map of my community. I saw I had all these old buildings that were falling apart within my community. And, and, I, and I tried to figure out, well, where were these, these buildings and how do they relate to the neighborhood? And I noticed they were uh, all on this, they were all attached to the streetcar line. We used to have a streetcar like 70 years ago or 50 years ago. And so, uh, you know, I talked to some friends that were developers in the area or, or, or people that were just had little businesses. And we talked about ideas to fix our community. And they asked me, what, what, what are your thoughts? I said, I know. Let's bring back the streetcar. And they said, yeah, it's a crazy idea. It'll never work. People have brought that up before. It's horrible. I'm like, no, I think we can do something because you see that theater project. So that, home, that, that night I went home and I created a website called the Oak Cliff Transit Authority. I had nice maps. I had, uh, I had news sections and newsletters because I knew how to build websites. So I could do that. Now, again, it was just me, but within like uh, uh, a week, the local newspaper picked up the story. And it's funny, he says, you know, uh, dreaming of the day the streetcars return. Oak Cliff's future could very well be tied to a trip to the past. That's what Jason Roberts and other members of the recently formed Oak Cliff Transit Authority are hoping. There were no other members. <laughs> uh, but, but, but the cool thing about this was that people in my community who had been used to being the bad part of town were like, wow, we've got a streetcar group? This is awesome. I want to take part. And I had like engineers that were legit started calling me. I had people that love streetcars that started calling. And at that point, I said, well, let's create an official board. So we created a board, and it was, and it was legitimate, and we started our, kind of our nonprofit movement with that. 
So while this is going on, this is so successful. I'm studying these cities. I'm learning about streetcars and old buildings. I start visiting some of these cities, and I start seeing all these bicyclists everywhere. So I thought, well, why don't I try to bring back bicycles, too? And we'll be the bicycle part of town as well. But I noticed, though, in my city, bicycling was basically, it, it, it was the images and the groups were all like wearing lycra or spandex, and they were riding real fast, or they were real sweaty, and they went for like 100 miles. And I kept thinking, well, where's the, where's the bicycling advocacy for the, like, the, like, the pretty girls on the bicycles with the dresses and the guys wearing the suits, and they're sitting upright, and their bikes are real heavy. They're not carbon something. Uh, so we got together, and we decided to form a group called Bike Friendly Oak Cliff. I didn't own a bicycle when we started this. but, uh, <laughs> but so, so I got Bike Friendly Oak Cliff together, and we we're all excited, like, yes, we're going to promote upright style biking, you know, heavy bicycles <laughs> in Oak Cliff, the bad part of town. So people were like, well, so then we decided to do our kickoff launch. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a big event to, show, to, to tour our area and, and promote our bicycling cause. So we're thinking, you know, we'll have 20 or 30 people coming out if we're lucky. Uh, I did this tr tour called Let's Follow the Trail of Lee Harvey Oswald, because we had to find something to do. Um, so I invited all these people out. And, 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 I, and, and so I went downtown to meet up, and I see, and, and then I see, uh, like, a, a lot of these bicyclists around, like, who are all these people? What happened is I had 150 people show up. And what you don't see in this picture, I'm in front of the photographer, and, uh, and I'm really nervous, because I'm like, oh my god, all these people are following me, and this isn't my bicycle, and I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> like, I am, I am not the leader of a bicycling movement. But I became one, and this is what I, I tell people all the time. If you're passionate about something, you're probably going to be a leader, because just that passion is going to be broadcast within the community, and people are going to want to get behind you. So take that charge and, and run with it. Um, okay, so now we're doing streetcars, I've got bicycles, I've got old theaters. Uh, so I decided to go back. Oh, oh by the way, now this, this is propagated throughout the, 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 the region now. There's bike friendly groups everywhere, and there's one in Z New Zealand too. We do a big gi giant bicycle festival now every year too. Um, so I decided, why don't I just take, out, take on those buildings? Because now I had, instead of just doing a theater, why don't I just, I got a whole block here that's, that's been like, abandoned or been boarded up. And when I looked at it, I tried to figure out, well, what's holding this block back? And, and, and what I found was, okay, in the 70s, this used to be the streetcar stop as well, they uh, turned it into a one-way street and widened it, they thinned the sidewalks, they created these zoning rules and things like that that apparently been on for like 70 years or so, that showed, you know, things, these things that were, you know, basically crippling the potential for this to be the little neighborhood gathering spot. You couldn't do a lot of things you wanted to do. So I started looking at all the ordinances that weren't allowed, like, or, or that were cost prohibitive, like to put flowers on the sidewalk, it was a thousand bucks, and to like do uh, cafe seating was a thousand dollars times area market value times 85% times 12%, like, and then we had like crowds weren't allowed to gather, you couldn't have awnings and arcades, and it gets really hot in Dallas, it gets hot here too. Uh, 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 use of sidewalks to display merchandise, so we couldn't do fruit stands, we couldn't do all those things. So I thought, we looked at this block, I thought, well, Obviously, we're not allowed to do any of this stuff that would make this really cool. So what would happen if we tried to break every law we possibly could over a weekend? <laughs> so we did. Um, we painted our own bike lanes. Uh, we brought in cafe seating. We, uh, uh, we brought in like this whole historic lights and things like that. We brought in flowers. And then we started printing up all the rules we were breaking. We put them on the windows, and we invited the city staff and the council members out and said, come to our party. And they didn't know what we were doing. They're like, oh, this is great. I love this. And then and they're like, oh, we're not supposed to be here. And, but <laughs> what happened was this became so uh, uh, powerful for the community and then for the city leadership to see this. And they came back, and they said, you know, we don't know why these rules have been on the books for so years. Uh, we should change these things. So a lot of the issues we're faced with, and I think this happens across the nation, are uh, we're, we're, we're basically hamstrung by a series of rules that were put in place years ago that we don't even know why we're doing, we just keep doing it. Uh, uh, we also, we created a bunch of uh, pop-up businesses as well in those vacant spaces. We went in and we created a coffee shop. We went into the ga uh, ga an old uh, uh, garage. We turned it into a kid's art studio. We created flower markets. What happened after this project too, it was really cool, we didn't expect, was one of the shops became permanent. It was so loved by the community that it's become an art studio. Uh, they offer kids classes during the days, at night, they do adult classes, so I can learn how to beer, uh, brew beer and cool things like that. So it's been a fixture, it's now an anchor to the area. This would have never happened. The, the, I think the, uh, the hurdles to starting business now are, are so high in people's minds. These ideas of I've got to create pro formas, and I've got to create, get all these long insurances, and these permits, it's going to take years, it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I'm going to give up. Our idea was like, hey, let's just do it on a weekend, as a community, we'll help fix the stage. You just do your art and let us help you. And what we found is when people get, actually get a chance just to focus on what they love and the community helps them, it can stay and they'll figure out all the rest later on. 
All right. So it worked so well the first time we thought, well, maybe that was a fluke. Let's try it again. And we kept telling, we kept, we kept getting told that it, you know, it's too hot in Dallas and that people won't walk. You know, that's great. You did that in April. So we thought, okay, let's do this in, in the middle of summer. It was 103 degrees. I took another block. And again, this is another one of those old streetcar stops. It's like eight blocks over. Uh, and you see there's like no sidewalks on one side. Like the cars are kind of encroaching and it's broken up over here. A gas station has broken that historic wall form. There's a pole with nothing on it. Uh, there's just, just random things. So it's really kind of gray and concrete. So we took the street and we brought 42 trees and we brought 100 bushes uh, to create pedestrian islands. We got the old, some old pallets and we made decks. We did the pop-up shops again. We created places for people to linger. We took those poles and we just put bicycles on it because remember now we're the bike part of town. That's what we told everybody. Um, <laughs> And they believed it. And that's the cool thing is people now are moved to the area because they're like, this is the bike part of town. So it's become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, we, we created a, a, our own crosswalks. You're not supposed to do that. But then we, um, we, we went in and we, we brought in tables and chairs and the parking space and places to linger. And we couldn't get people out of here. That was a problem. It was 100 degrees. And as long as people have a great place that they love, they're going to come out. And, and you're actually going to have a hard time like, kind of kicking them out. Uh, okay, so... Uh, oh, there's a picture I love of the trees coming off the truck. Uh, so what, how the, way, the way we did this was these trees were scheduled to go to a hotel to be planted. So we just kind of asked with some friends, could we reroute that truck to our block for the weekend and have them fall off the truck? So we did. Uh, so, and this is a cool, one of my favorite shots of that block because you know, in our community, we had rendering fatigue. We'd seen all these architects that had sort of these designs of how cool things would be, and with the, they'd plug in trees, and they'd Photoshop people. But these are real people. They're not Photoshopped, and these are real bicycles and real trees. And, you know, and that's a real pole that has something on it now. <laughs> uh, and I, this is one of my favorite pictures. I, saw, I took this of this little boy, and he's walking on this block, and I think he's like, what is that thing? And I'm like, it's a tree. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we've done blocks, and I've done bicycles, and I've done streetcars, in, in old theaters. So I had another group that had a dog park they've been trying to work on for like a year. And they've been talking to a council member. The council member said, you know, uh, I talked to the city officials, city staff, and they said that it's going to be, you have to do, it has to be on 30 acres to do a dog park, which means it's going to be far away from our community. Uh, it's going to take us, you know, millions of dollars. And they came to me and asked me, well, what would you do in this scenario? And we're standing across this, this field that people were dumping on. And I said, well, why don't we make that into a dog park? And they're like, okay, we could do that. Like, it's in the neighborhood. It's, it's small. We could prove that we can do a small dog park. And they're like, okay, we'll do some fundraisers. We'll raise some money. We'll do some community, uh, like, pledge drives and things like that. It might take us, you know, eight or nine months and all. Is that what you're thinking? I'm like, no, let's do it next weekend. So we did. <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, we, we basically found a bunch of our trees that had fallen down from a storm, so we mulched our own trees. We made it the official Dallas Park sign ourselves uh, for our Papa Pooch Park. <laughs> we made swings for kids because we found it's important whenever you create great public spaces to have things for eight and 80-year-olds. My uh, friend had goats, so we he brought his goat fencing out. Uh, and so now this, this dog park is, is, is going to be installed permanently. It's going to be another area from this, but just not far from this. So this project really kind of opened the eyes of the, of the community and the city to see maybe we, weren't, maybe we were doing things wrong. Um, so, okay, so that was all cool. We did all these other places. I've done dog parks, and we did streetcars, and we did bicycles. And so I thought I'd take the, why don't I take the most soul-crushing, cold, you know, gray, horrible place I could find in the city and try to fix that. That was City Hall Plaza. So, um, and uh, this, was, this was designed by I Am Pay. So we were I Am Paid. I think you guys have been I Am Paid, or I know Oklahoma City has been I Am Paid, and I'm sorry for that. But, uh, uh, but, um, but the noted sociologist from New York, uh, William White, had done a plan 30 years ago to try to fix this plaza. And this is a plaza that's twice the size of St. Mark's Square. You've got a city hall with 1,500 employees, but nobody uses it, and, uh, except for that guy. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and I found this old plan. It was like sitting on a shelf, and we, I read through it. Like, this is great. Why didn't we do this? It seemed, it seemed like it was totally doable. And they are like, ah, be too, back then they said it would be too expensive. Nobody would come here. It wouldn't work. It's too hot, whatever. So we did. We, we did in 30 days, and we just built our own, like, uh, uh, pergolas, out of, uh, uh, and we built our own benches out of, again, uh, out of pallet wood. Um, there's our council members playing frisbee. <laughs> uh, we brought big chess sets out, so kids started playing out, out in the area. These are all the employees now. They're like, wow, I'm supposed to be here <laughs> hanging out. And then the, we brought in a, a, a food a, a stand, I'm sorry, a shipping container with a, another group in the community, and, uh, and we started testing these little business ideas out, too, letting little lo local businesses try out their food. And we thought this would be a great opportunity, you know, because you have a captive audience. They've got no food options in the area, or very little. 
Why don't we use the City Hall Plaza for this? So now this has been going on monthly. It's called the Living Plaza, and, it's, and you get all these great little local businesses that get a chance to test out their little business ideas at City Hall itself. We took those concrete benches and we made them into chess sets, checkers and things like that because they were too cold to sit on in the winter and whatever. Okay, now the better block. This thing we did a year and a half ago, it's gone all over the country. So we've been kind of blown away by that part. It's something we didn't expect because we were just trying to fix our own community. And I've, I've been flying all over, which has been surreal for somebody who, you know, wasn't in, in the world of, of consulting and things like that to actually get to talk to people about these things. This is what's been amazing about this. And we're getting to do projects. I'm working on a project in San Antonio right now and Wichita and, and uh, New York did one. A lot of communities, we kind of open sourced it, treat it like Linux. You guys do it yourself. If you want us to help, we'll help as well. Uh, Billy Joel worked on the one in New York which is really cool. Um, all right, so let me get back to the streetcars. So, uh, so my little band of streetcar group at the, at the beginning, you know, we were out and we, we went to, we started studying all these other cities and, you know, it was just like, it was like five of us. And uh, uh, we, we, this is us in Portland meeting with officials. And we told the city, we like, you know, we heard about these grants that are coming around to try to, to build infrastructure in certain cities to help, like stimulus grants. And they're like, yeah, whatever, Oak Cliff, go ahead. You apply for those grants. And we're like, okay, we will. And uh, we'll see what happens. And what happened was we won a grant. We brought, we're bringing the streetcar back to Oak Cliff. <laughs> $23 million for coming back. Um, all I did was create a website. So just that's what I have to remind people. Like, remember, that's how these things start. You don't have to have all everything worked out. So kind of want to step through three, all really what we need to do in order to make things happen. What I found, first of all, first and foremost, show up. If you don't show up, she will. And she's against everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, and, you, and the thing is, nobody shows up. You learn that real fast. It's like five or six people. It's always the same people. So if you just keep showing up, like that guy keeps showing up, and you're the guy that's saying, I'm going to bring the streetcar back, you probably, it's probably going to work because nobody else is doing anything. Um, so, and I, that also means be present. Be, in, be there. Be there for your community. Figure out a way, a way that you can make things better. We, can all, we all have skills we can bring to the table. Uh, next thing we found is give it a name. Just naming something. That simple thing creates an identity and builds pride in something. So we created our art conspiracy and our Bike Friendly Oak Cliff and Oak Cliff Transit Authority. We made fancy logos. And uh, there was one guy who had a cluster of buildings in our community, and he just decided to call them the Bishop Arts District. And it's become kind of the Renaissance <laughs> uh, turnaround area because everyone's like, wow, we got a place called the Bishop Arts District. Uh, so that's why I always tell people, just name whatever it is you're doing. Um, and then lastly, set a date and publish it. And I call it blackmail yourself. This is what I do all the time. I won't even know more than 10% of what we're going to do for a better block project, but I'll put the, I have the poster ready, and I've got my friends on board, and then we publish it and say, we're going to do a better block, and everyone's like, oh no, we're doing it in 60 days too, so we have to commit. And we always like to do short time frames to commit to these things, because if we don't, um, we tend to want to back out. We get to, we'll talk ourselves out of why we shouldn't do these things or why it's going to be a problem, so I like to get everybody on the hook. So um, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much.